Hi everyone, it's Dr. Ahmed Hafez. In this video, we want to talk about the DSEK exam that we've been getting a lot of questions about, the core specialty exam. We're going to cover how a dental specialist abroad could become a specialist in Canada. How could they become licensed to work in their specialty in Canada? And um, this is usually a topic that not a lot talk about, so we want to put this information out there to help people that are looking for it and now you could have unlimited access to it whenever you need to come back and review it from here uh, and after if you still need a consult after this video we are happy to do so just contact us via email and we could discuss your specific situation and put the best plan for you to approach okay so what we're, we're going to cover three main points the first point is we're going to do a review of the entire pathway of the special for specialists how do they become licensed here or the equivalency process for specialists okay the entire path we're going to review that the second point is we're going to focus on the dsceke exam and then the third po point we're going to discuss the best approach to prepare for the exam and some timelines okay and then after that after that summary we're going to go to uh, the t uh, few tabs i have open in the browser uh, and how to find this information on the NDB website and some links and, and see if we could find any further information there. Eventually, after that, we will talk about the next step after DSEKE. Um, it may be split into two videos or maybe in this video, depending on how long the video uh, ends up being. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching and let's get started. Welcome back, everyone. Let's uh, go through the summary part, the three points we talked about. So I, made, I created this, these uh, few slides here. How to become a specialist in Canada for internationally trained dentists that are specialists abroad. Okay, just to be clear. Now, you want to look at this like an orientation for the specialty equivalency process. So if you're familiar with the uh, general NDEB equivalency process for general dentists, just in real, uh, to, to compare here, there's no direct pathway in the specialty process. There isn't. You can't just do exams uh, and become and, and work here as a specialist. Unless you're from an accredited program, like you're a specialist from the U.S. or Canada already, then you just have to do the board exams. Okay, so you have to, if you're not from a non-accredited uh, specialty program, you have to go to a university program. We'll talk about that later. It is a highly or high cost program. This whole pathway, relatively speaking, for just doing one exam, the application, it's, it costs more but less and less predictable. You don't know um, if you're going to get in. There's no guarantees if you pass your first exam that you're going to move to the next step. You might never get to the next step. This is the problem. So that's why there's a different strategy I like to approach. Uh, that's safer for some students that we'll talk about at the end of the video. So here is the pathway. Okay, so the pathway is first you're going to do your application to the NDEB. You know, the whole thing, application documents. So this is different than the general dentist uh, pathway. You have, to, there, you have special documents here, different documents, okay? Uh, you have to send your specialty dental degree and your specialty transcripts. So we'll, we'll, you could see a list of those later, but just know that there's a, uh, you know, a different application process. Then once you are approved, right, that, okay, it's recognized, then you're, you're allowed to take the DSCKE exam. So this is an examination that you'll take. Okay. Then you get into a university program. After you finish that program, you take the board exam and then you get certified and then you could get your license in the province so what i'm going to do just kind of give you a comparison to the general dentist pathway so that you could look at dsceke similar to being for gps the afk and acj so you know how if you want to become a general dentist if you want to if you're a general dentist and you're trying to get your equivalency you go through afk acj then skill right so the afk and acj is like the exam for non-accredited people dentist to, so you do it pre-accredited and then, you know, you keep doing the exams and you become accredited and you do the board. So the exam for specialists is called DSCKE and it's a combination of AFK and ACA. We'll look at that later, but that, that's kind of like how you want to compare it. Okay. This may take you six months. 
Now, the DSATP is similar to is the university program. So remember, there's no direct pathway, right? It's only indirect. So once you do your exam, your DSCKE, you have to go to university. Just like for GPs, when they do AFK, they don't have to go to university, but they could usually, right? So, but here you only have the indirect pathway through university. Usually that is a 12 months program. Okay, so you're already looking at maybe, uh, maybe you could look at this as a two year process. Okay. Then after you finish your program right here, you become, you, you, you become equivalent to someone that's accredited. Okay. So then you do the exam that everyone else does, even the graduates of Canadian specialties, right? And US specialties, which is the NDSE. The NDSE, this is like the board exam, but for specialists, just like how in general dentistry, we have the OSCE and written board, right? For specialists, they have their board, which is the NDSE. So everybody has to do this. Even if you graduate from uh, or you complete a specialty program in Canada or US, you have to do the NDSE exam to get your certification in Canada as a specialist. Okay. So now if you graduate from, if you've completed a specialty program in Canada or the U S you don't have to do the DSEKE, right? You're going to just go to the boards basically, which is the NDSE. Okay. Which is a national dental specialty examination. And remember, just like the general dentist pathway, certification does not equal license. So once you get your NDSE certification, then that means now you could apply for your license in which province you want to work. Just like how uh, there's RCDSO, right? Royal College of Dental Surgeons of Ontario. You could apply for the your provincial license. So NDS certificate is for specialist. NDEB certificate is for general dentist right? Uh, the NDSE certification is given by the Royal College of Dentists of Canada. Okay. Just differentiate that from the Royal College of Dentists of Ontario. Uh, this one's of Canada. So it's like a specialty organization for specialists of all of Canada. All right. So I hope that clarifies the main pathway here. Um, and now we're going to go into more detail and, and start and discuss this, this part. Okay. So that's the general uh, pathway of what you have to do. Okay, so the DSCKE exam. Let's talk about this examination. Okay, first application and submitting the required documents. Of course, we all know they need documents, right? So there's always this step. What's different here? So you have something called then the NDEB process, right? The regular GP process. You have the DSCKE application form. You have to download that. We'll look at when we get to the browser or the tab section, we'll, we'll see how that looks. Um, it's a seven page document. When I looked into it, really, there's two pages that you have to fill up. And then there's one that has a signature and the remaining ones are just reading. Okay. That's how I saw it. The confirmation degree of completion. If you've done the NDEB general dentist one, remember the confirmation degree, the thing that you have to fill up, it's like a one page, you fill up the first half and then your university fills up the second half and sends it back to the NDEB. So there's one space specifically for specialists, okay, that you want to do. Check if your specialty is accepted. This is a step that, you know, you just check. You check if you if that specialty exists in Canada. So, for example, if you did a specialty in implants somewhere that's recognized but it doesn't exist in Canada, then you can't become that specialist here. For as of now, we don't have a, dent, a recognized implant specialty, right? And then you get to the annoying, you know, the more DSCK required documents, okay? The the detailed documents. Okay. So that's the application it, it kind of summarized and the browser uh, section will go and check that out. Okay. So what specialties are recognized in Canada? Okay. So we have dental public health, endodontics, radiology, uh, surgery, oral medicine, oral pathology, orthodontics, pediatric dentistry, periodontics, prosthodontics. So pretty much most of the ones you would expect. Now the issue is not just this. It is how, uh, how, um, many programs for each specialty is actually offered in a university. That is the competitive problem. So for example, 
oral maxillofacial radiology and oral maxillofacial surgery is only offered at UFT. So there's only one program for it. So that's very competitive, right? And the other ones, for example, dental public health, it's offered at two universities. Endodontics is two, uh, UFT and, U and UBC, uh, University of British Columbia. Pathology is two. Ortho is three, but I couldn't find the details about the third. We'll talk about this when we get to the university part. And the rest are all two. So the issue is not just the, that the specialty is offered. The problem is not every university is offering specialties for foreign trained dentists, the, the, the one year preparation, this phase right here, right? So once you finish your DSCKE, you have to get into a university that offers the training, the DSATP. And just because the specialties are recognized, not all of the universities that we have, what, nine or 10, whatever they are, dental faculties offer them. Okay, only three, or you could say really only two are offering most of them and radiology and surgery is only one. So that's the limiting factor, getting in these positions and they only accept a few. And sometimes there are years where they don't even accept, like we'll see how that looks like later on. Okay, so now you know the specialties that are at least recognized in Canada. So what's the required documents for a DSCKE? Uh, there's documents that you need directly from the university to the NDEB just like the confirmation degree. This is a special, the specialty one, okay? Not the same one you use for, as a general dentist. This is a different one that is for specialists, okay? Then you have your official academic records, you know, all the dental degree, dental transcripts from the university sent directly, and dental specialty degree, uh, and dental specialty transcript, all your academic things, there'll be a list of it uh, in on the website as well right so you have to look into that now the, what's different here if you have already been approved by the ndeb you've probably done your general dentistry part so now you might have to add on additional stuff which is a dental specialty degree right and your transcripts there so what documents that's the things that you need directly from from uni from uni to ndeb okay now, which things you have to submit, okay? You have to complete the application form. Obviously, there's an application form that you want to do the DSCKE exam. I feel like this exam is very, like, manually controlled because, uh, you know, it's not like a click online that you just apply how AFK is. You just click on the exam and it works. You actually have to download a form, complete it, and send it to them. So it's a PDF uh, form that you have to actually download, complete the form, fill it up, and then and email it to them maybe. Um, that way. Okay, there's a completed DSCK application requirements form. We'll see. We'll look into the browser of all these forms. Uh, photographs, you might already have that maybe for them. Application fee. Okay, so there's an application, obviously, for the, there's a fee for the application, right? Um, to the order of the NDEB, Canadian funds only, and this is 3000 Now, just making sure you understand, application fee is just as a fee for the application, not for the actual registration of the exam. Okay. <laughs> I know. So this is just the application fee. Okay. That's $3,000. This is why I say it's more costly relative. So it, like when you apply to open an account in the NDB, it's probably like what? 800, 600. And then when you apply for AFK, it's 800. And then when you do ACJ, it's like maybe a thousand and something, right? This one, the application itself is 3000. Check if your specialty is there. Yep. Notarized photo. So these, you know, similar to NDEV process. And then you have original final dental specialty degree as well. Not just the original dental degree. Okay. And there's maybe these things if applicable. Now, once you submit all your documents, okay, this is you remember ap applying, right? You're not registering for the exam yet. I just want to be clear. You're just applying that. Can, are you approved as a specialist, right? Getting your approval that you're a specialist that costs 3000. Now, all the documents must be received by the NDB for the application deadline, depending on which date you're sending. But you know, at the end of the day, you send it and then you could always apply for the, the exam that's later. Right. And they begin studying your documents when everything is received. Once approved, now you could register for a DSCKE. So that's done. Let's say you are approved. 
So what is, now we're getting into the exam. This was all the application. So what we talked about so far is kind of this part. Okay, let's put a check there. All right. Now we're going to go into the registering for a DSCKE exam. So now you're approved as a specialist by the NDEB, right? They recognize that you are uh, a non-accredited specialist. So this exam, DSCKE, is the Dental Specialty Core Knowledge Examination for non-accredited dental specialists. Okay, you'll, once you finish the exam, you'll receive a numerical score. For example, you might get 87, right? That's what you'll receive. But there's no defined passing score. There's no pass or fail in this exam. It's just you get a score. Wow, isn't that weird? Okay, so what's the point? The point is they're going to take the scores of people that did the DSCKE and the, and this will be forwarded to the faculties or the universities that have the DSATP programs, the one-year programs that are willing to take in candidates, right? And these universities will compare these scores and will play a role in their decision-making of who gets to be, uh, you know, enrolled in their program. Okay, so this is a uh, something important to understand. It doesn't mean if you there's no such thing as passing or failing. It's just it's it's a number that plays a role in the decision. Uh, making for the universities if you can take this or you're allowed to be who's the best among you that could enroll in their DSATP program okay and you could only take the DSCKE twice or so two attempts it's not really an attempt because there's no fail or pass you can just take it twice okay so if you want to get a higher mark and and uh, now I know the question I just thought of which one would they consider I didn't see that yet maybe we could find that later on but um, I could assume they might consider the higher mark, okay? Now, the cost for the DSEK exam to register in is 3500 So you can see it's a lot more expensive than the AFK. So now, so far, the application to get approved plus the exam fee is 6500 already, all right? So you might be spending that and then finding out it might not work out. This is why it's more costly compared to AFK and and ACJ, right? And it's still recommended that you get help with this and take courses. And we offer one for DSCKE, but I'll talk about that in the strategy section. Okay, dates and locations. All right, so when is the DSCKE exam conducted? I always want to, uh, the, the way I memorize it is it's usually uh, either with the a the afk exam or the month where our, our our afk course starts this is how i kind of memorize it okay so it's usually feb of every year right so that's when afk happens as well or it could be march okay that's when afk course starts okay another thing is it could be in in august of every year that's when afk happens or it could be september that's when our afk course begins so again it could be the month of the afk or the month after for example the current one that's coming up is in feb that's when they're doing the dseke but i remember the previous one was in september so you can see it's not like but that's where it happens so you want to memorize these two things so we could kind of draw a timeline for it then uh, later on just to kind of get an idea the registration deadline is usually the month before so in early so it could be jan 1st or july 1st if if the exam is in august right so usually the registration deadline is a month one month before but early in that month and locations are in prometric centers across canada so usually it's within canada as how i read it from the website you'll see the list when you are able to register for the dsck exam Okay, so I hope that was enough there for dates and locations. Now, exam format, what's the exam like? You get a three hour exam, three hours with a 15 minute break. And this was not on their website, but this is what I understood from uh, experienced students that it's around 90 to 100 questions, maybe 90, 100, 110, something like that. Okay. And you have three hours. Now, the exam questions are a mix of ACJ and AFK questions. So for those of you that understand the NDEB process for general dentists, 
this could be easier for you to learn. AFK and ACJ. So if you, it's a mix of those. So you're doing both an AFK and ACJ exam. Now, if you have no idea what that means, I'm going to explain what that means to you if you're new to this. AFK exam questions means regular MCQs. Like normal MCQs, you have a question and then five options, A, B, C, D, or four options or three options, and there's one correct answer. Regular MCQ. However, if you're not familiar with the ACJ, those are, you have a question or a case, patient info, maybe perio chart. Then you have options. It could be from A all the way to P or O. So like maybe 13, 14 options. And you could have one or more correct answer. One or more correct answers. Okay. And, you know, let's say you have four correct answers. That means each one will get 0 0.25 maybe. Right? They'll be distributed like this. And, and if you pick two of them, you get half. If you pick three, you get seven, uh, 0 0.75. If you pick them all, you get one. If you picked an incorrect one, you could get zero for the question. You lose the question. So that's how the ACJ style is. This is why um, ACJ is the part that plays a more of a role in this, I believe. Why? Because the whole world is familiar with the AFK or the MCQs that are normal like this. The whole world does these type of exams. But ACJ exam is very unique to the, the Canadi like a Canadian experience. I think it's like a unique thing. And if you don't learn it, then you're going with a disadvantage. Yes, everybody knows the MCQs are normal. That's easy. But the people that go knowing how the ACJ is have an advantage. And that's what students that came to us as scholars, that's what they did. They took our ACJ course and were able to score 87. I'll get to the strategies later, but let's continue understanding the format. So now you understand that's a mix of ACJ style questions, which is cases, more than one correct answer, 15 options, and AFK questions, which is the regular MCQ. Some reported to me that 70% of the questions were more like ACJ style, where it's uh, cases. So that's why it plays a major role. Now I could continue, I'm going to continue to gather what kind of, which style is like uh, more than the other, but so far that's what we know. Now, once you complete the exam, you'll receive a score and that score, again, it's not pass fail, just a score. Okay. Here's their, uh, oh wait, this is an ACJ blueprint. Okay. Excuse me there, but I think they had it under the SCKE. But ignore this slide for now, okay? Now, once you get the results, the results of the DSCKE exam will be sent by email. Okay, by email to you, the participant, and to Canadian universities offering the specialty assessment and training programs, the DSATP. This will be normally within six weeks, okay, of the exam. So the DSCKE is an admission test used by these programs at the university. So the universities are offering that one year program to train you. Okay. They call it sometimes a gap program, meaning that they want to try to assess you. See, do you have the same information as a specialist here and in Canada? And if you, if there's any gaps, they're going to help you complete those gaps. So there's no defined passing score. So the, this case is an admission test to help you get into those programs. The results of the DSCK are used by faculties to uh, indenture the admission process for the DSATP program. So next step after this is applying for these programs at universities. Um, now, before we're not going to go to there right now. First, we're going to talk about the strategies on how you prepare for the DSC. Let's try to do a little summary, okay? And we could tell you what some of our students did. So my favorite way of preparing, here's the three types of students that you'll have that are specialists, right? We could call them specialists, dentists, um, and here's the strategy. One strategy that is really good is to complete the NDEB process as a GP, okay? As a general dentist. Now, when you do this, you are going through AFK, right? ACJ. ACS, 
then you're doing your boards, right? Then while you start working, you're working as a dentist in Canada, you're making income, then you could go and approach the DSCKE program. So why do I say this? First, there's two reasons. First of all, there's a higher chance and predictability in the direct general dentist process. Second of all, when you become a general dentist, there's a lot of things you could still do in specialty, right? But the difference is you might not just get paid as a specialist, but you could still, uh, if you're good at ortho, you could take a course just to get your hours and then do ortho, right? So that's an example. So you might realize you might not need to do the whole specialty thing. You could just, you're happy as a general dentist and, and doing more of your specialty within, your, within the office or as an associate, whatever you like. So we talked, the third thing is, um, you have already studied AFK and ACJ, so you're more prepared to do this exam, the DSCKE, right? So now you're using that background, you could go review those subjects and do the DSCKE. And I think we mentioned the income part, so now you're making income, so you're not gonna be um, negatively affected by uh, the DSCK if it doesn't work out, right? You're not gonna spend 6,500 just for the exam and application, and you're not going to be because when you get into the universities, it's going to cost around 70 to 80,000. We'll talk about that later on in the university part. So I think this strategy is the good strategy. And I know people personally that did this method. They went through the AF, the, the direct process. They passed they, their exam. They became they're working as dentists. Uh, then they actually came back and took our AFK and they're taking ACJ courses. Uh, to review so that they could take the ADS. And that doesn't now, it doesn't affect them because they're already working, they have income, and they could afford to review AFK and ACJ with courses, even though they've already passed them, you see? But now they want to score high on DSCKE. So that's why they're reviewing it from, they're taking courses again. So that's a good strategy. Yes, you're pushing your specialty to the end and you're focused on getting becoming a GP, then you do your specialty. That's a good strategy. That's for people that maybe are limited right financially so you don't want to take that financial risk of doing the SCKE then not working out then maybe needing to go do AFK and ACJ and then spending more right now the other method is also one that I like if you are not limited uh, or you are able to afford this it is also a good plan which is you do AFK and ACJ once you pass AFK and ACJ of course of course, here I'm implying that you took a course, all right? So you took a course and you passed. Now you did two things at once. You did your AFK ACJ exam and you are already fresh with knowledge from the AFK and ACJ. So you could do the DSCK exam if you've already applied. So this one, if you could afford that because you're doing, you're paying for AFK uh, exam, AFK course, ACJ exam, ACJ course, but then you, you're already applied for a DSCKE. You already you already applied from, uh, for this application before. You don't register yet. Then you register once you're done these two exams, and then you do the DSCKE. So now what you did is you opened both pathways, right? And you did it with two courses that were already necessary for AFK and ACJ. This is a very smart way of doing it too. Uh, if you differentiate this from the first method, the first method... Uh, you know, you're doing AFK, ACJ, ACS, you might have forgotten some stuff by the time you're a dentist now, you're working. So you might benefit from coming back and taking the courses again, but it won't be that impactful because you're already making income as a dentist, right? The second pathway is you're, you're paying for these courses once, you're passing those exams, and then you're using that knowledge that's still fresh to do the DSCK even before your ACS, right? You could think that way because it's still a theory exam. So you're taking AF, AFK, ACJ, combining that knowledge to do the, this is one of my favorite approaches if you could afford to do all these exams uh, before you become a dentist, right? Now, some students or some dentists, specialists, they just refuse the general dentist pathway and they only want the DSCKE. This is, to my honest opinion, is my least favorite way for people to do. And I have my reasons uh, and I could I'm gonna share that with you. So, and even though we do offer courses for DSCKE, right? But I'm going to see, show you how it's not the best method, right? 
So if you decide that you just want to go do DSCKE right away and you want to avoid the general dentist, you want to avoid AFK, ACJ, right? One way that has been working that students or dentists came to us and what they did is they took the ACJ course only. And we have students that actually got 87 just by taking the ACJ course. Okay. This goes in with thinking that you know, the ACJ style questions are 70%. So if you focus on that unknown territory that's unique to Canada and you focus on that uh, course that you, you could take with us, and then you the remaining 30% that are AFK style questions, you could probably figure out they're probably going to be similar to released. Uh, you know, not all of them are going to be difficult, but you give yourself a, a boost in your mark if you could get those ACJ questions correct. Okay. So that's one way. Now, we also had a student that did an AFK course with us uh, and then did the ACJ, I think. And then they also got 87. So as you can see, the ACJ plays the main role. I, and we also have one that did the AFK course and then got uh, in the 80s. I forgot what it was, though. Now, we do have an ACJ, uh, sorry, a DSCK course for people that only want to do DSCK, right? And what that is, is basically the full ACJ and a minimal part of AFK. So what we like to give the DSCKE students is full ACJ and the minimal part of AFK includes basic science, epidemiology and some advanced epidemiology and pathology. Okay. Is that everything? No. Another option is you could do full AFK and full ACJ. Okay. So what are the options for people that want to do DSCKE right away without doing GP is you either do a full ACJ course only. That's one option. We used to have that as a DSCKE, you know, uh, essential. Okay. We have a DSCK or you do full ACJ plus minimal AFK, which is what we call our DSCKE program. And then what you could do is a third option is do full on AFK and full on ACJ. This is why it gets complicated. Let's say you decide you want to do full AFK and full ACJ. Then you might as well have done option two, right? And passed AFK and ACJ, then did the DSCK. It just, it's a smarter way. Now, one problem with option uh, doing the ACJ alone, which could work, is that you lack AFK knowledge the foundational knowledge, right? That are fu is fundamental to move on to ACJ. I find that students from my experience that we had in DSCKE courses that have done AFK and ACJ understand AC DSCKE stuff way better. They understand the ACJ. Students that haven't done AFK at all, when they come to do ACJ, they're a little bit lost because they don't have that foundation of pharma, uh, perio, the diseases, the diagnosis, they don't have that yet. So they find ACJ difficult. So that's why my advice is to you do, you, you, you approach DSCKE from one of these two ways. And option two is really good if you could afford to do the DSCKE. Okay. And you save on doing a DSCKE course because you're only paying for AFK, ACJ course, then you're using that knowledge to do the exam. Okay. So why what's what about this option isn't this really good as well here's the issue with this one it's good but it's about the timing okay you'll have to be studying afk and acj in the same time frame to make benefit of it for the exam otherwise you have to do afk first then do acj and then wait for your exam right and then it just ends up being the same as this one so you might as well have done the afk exam and acj exam so let's try draw. I think this is the last strategy. Yes. And then the next section is all about the DSATP, which um, we'll talk about later. Okay. So let me give you, show you a timeline here. Let's draw this together. Okay. So you have, we said DSCKE is usually, let's say, in Feb and is usually in, um, let's say September or August, right? Now, let's say August for now. Okay. Now ACJ courses usually start in September 
and March. So ACJ will be here. Right? Now, AFK courses usually start also the same way. So AFK will be here all the way to August. You see? Because that's when the AFK also happens. And AFK course also here will be like this until Feb. Correct? I'll put the Feb of the off the year after. So as you see, if you are trying to do the full AFK ACJ, you would have to, let's say you're preparing for the one in August, the DSEK in August, you'd have to register for AFK and ACJ here, right? And study both of them. And that's very difficult. Like people find AFK itself, you know, difficult to keep up with. So what you could do if you really want to do this is you do both courses but you, you kind of like not focus too much on AFK, you focus more on ACJ, right? Now, what our DSCKE course is designed to do is that we push, it's designed to do this, just to kind of explain this part. It's pretty much an ACJ course that is two months before DSCKE, right? Like this, right? This is for DSCKA students plus some uh, lectures, as I said, from AFK, right? Which is like basic science, epidemiology, and pathology, okay? Plus some lectures, okay? So we'll be like, and there'll be some live sessions as well. So basically, that's what the 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 DSCKE course that we're offering that we found works for students. They're pretty much taking the ACJ course just before their exam. But here's the question: What if you do this? Then you go to DSCK, then you notice you need, you want to do AFK. What's going to happen? You're going to do the AFK course. So now you did it backwards. You took the ACJ knowledge first, then you decide to do the AFK. Then when you get to ACJ, you're going to be like, well, do I need another course? So you're just kind of going in a, in a you know, unorganized fashion. What I think, again, is the best strategy. You take an AFK course, pass AFK, take ACJ, pass ACJ, then do the DSCK later on, okay? That way you're not, you're, you're, you're moving the right way. You're doing the foundational knowledge. You're, then you're doing the case knowledge, which is ACJ. And then you go to the exams of these and, or you finished. Once you're done these exams, you go to DSCKE. Okay. But we do offer this option. I think whoever, if you're interested in this concept, please contact us before you decide on what you want to do. We will do, we'll uh, have a free consult for you. Discuss what your motives are, what your expectations are what your goals are and figure out what's the best way to do it for yourself, right? Another way is um, you could do AFK, you take the AFK course, take the ACJ course, then just do DSCKE, right? You spread it out so you'll prepare longer. It might take you a year to prepare for DSCKE then, right? Because you, it takes time to for knowledge to sink in sometimes. So these are my strategies that I think about for uh, this exam. And I know there's a lot of different ways of doing it. And that's why we recommend every, uh, everyone that's thinking about this to book a consult so we could talk about their specific situation, how to approach it. I told you what my favorite ways of approaching it are. It's these two. Uh, option two looks really nice. I think you get the most time effective if you could afford that extra 6,500. So you just need an extra here, 6,500 for the exam and application for DSCKE. If you have that, in addition to your AFK and ACJ, uh, you know, budget, then you could do this. And it's the most effective because that way you're opening both pathways early on in your process. And you don't have to wait until after you are uh, working as a dentist. But option A becomes, makes it easier in terms of finances because you're making income. Um, and now, you know, you, you just go for a DSCKE, not too, uh, you know, without that much anxiety because yeah, you want to score high, but you're not, there's no financial burden here, right? There, you could take the risk. Option, the third option is the one I don't recommend. But if you are determined to do it, please contact us and we'll discuss it. So that is the summary part, everyone. Um, I'm not going to move on to the DSATP. First, we're going to go to the browser sections just to show you how to find this information. Okay, 
All right, here we go. So I want to show you when you go to the NDEB website, let's just click here. This is the NDEB website. If you want to learn about this whole process, you go to the specialty, this one, okay? Specialty certification. And you can see you have all this stuff here, okay? Test accommodations, appeals, withdraw. These are all common between all of them, you see? They're all the same, withdraw, so you don't need to do those. Um, how to prepare is also the same tab between all of them. It takes you to the same spot, but we'll look into it. Uh, pretty much, you could click here. Okay, they're gonna show you the specialties that the, the Canada has. See, they're not telling you how often each one is offered here, okay? Okay, learn, and you can see they're showing you two pathways here. There's two pathways. Uh, the first, well, one of them doesn't count because it's for a graduate of Canadian and U.S. specialty program. So this is the pathway for uh, accredited specialist already. So all they have to do is do the NDSE, uh, get their NDSE certification and do the NDSE exam. Right. That's like the board exam. And then they could get licensed. But for foreign trained dentists that are from a non accredited special, especially they have to do the DSCKE first. So you have to hold a master's degree in a specialty uh, that is authorized by government. Sure. Your dental specialty is recognized in Canada. Your degree is not recognized by the commission. Yeah. So you're non accredited. So you have to do the DSCKE. Just like how we said, you go to the DS uh, that program and then you go through that process. Okay, so let's look at some other stuff here. Uh, you can see the overview of this process, the format, right? Oh, here you go. I found this 95 to 100 single answer choice questions. I'm just in a three hour. Okay, so you have, as I said, 95 to 100 questions. Okay, so it was, I did take it from the website. All right. Okay, and passing here. This is all the information we talked about that it will be forwarded to the universities. There's no passing thing. All right. So as you can see, you could find all the information here. Now, if you click here, you can see it's the protocol. So this will show you more details, right, about the entire uh, concept, like uh, check in what you need, the format again, some sample questions. So this is what we mean by AFK style questions, like regular MCQ. And then you have the ACJ style, one or more correct answers like this. You'll get a radiograph. The radiograph will be, okay, where do you see carries? This still of this, this still. You can see here how um, the one, the each question will have one mark and you can see how the mark is divided into five options. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. If you answer these ones, they're really wrong that you'll lose the mark. And if you answer these ones, it's just a zero. So you won't get anything or lose anything. Just like ACJ, you can't lose more than one and you can't gain more than one per question. Here's how the cases would look like. All right, they give you a case like this. All right, and the perio chart may come like that. Okay, this is the DSC, DSCKE blueprint. I think when I copied it, I copied the wrong one. Um, they're saying this is the percentage of where the questions are coming from, but it's pretty much everything. Uh, I wouldn't, usually we find that sometimes a radiology question could be a patho question or a basic science question could be a pharma question. So you wanna just study the, the main things you do for AFK and ACJ and you'll be fine. Based on experience, I'm not, I'm saying this based on students that have taken our ACJ and passed or, or not passed, got 87, got good scores. Okay. So this is the protocol, nothing here. You could take it twice. Okay. Let's see dates and locations. So if you go here again and you go to dates and locations, this is the page you'll get. You can see the next exam as of now is uh, Feb. 2022 and the registration deadline is Jan. All right, uh, fees. Let's show you the fees here. Application, non-refundable is 3,000 and the exam itself is 35. So you're looking at 6,500, right? Just to get through the, so if you, again, if you could afford that during your AFK ACJ uh, and when you pass it, I think it's a good idea to do it then, okay? Uh, how to apply? We talked about these as well. You could see here the same information, um, the checklist. Okay. Okay. So registering for DSCKE here to register for the DSCKE, you can see there's a registration form for the exam. So this is the exam registration form. So when you, when you're ready to register for the exam, this is the form. Okay. Okay. You can see you get a, you have to fill up this information, just one page. 
Okay, you fill it up. This is how you register for the DSCKE exam. Okay, we have this fees tab. We finished that. We have this tab. Okay, this is the application form. So look at the application form and registration form. Application form is for you to get recognized as a specialist. So remember we said there's an application. When you pay the 3000 this is the form you want to fill, right? Application form for graduates of non-accredited dental specialty programs. Okay, you could check which specialty you are here. You check that box um, and you fill up this information. One page. Here's a second page. Uh, you state where which universities you were graduate from and year to year, like which year to year you sign uh, some more signing and reading. And then rest of it is pretty much reading. Uh, another thing to understand about this exam, it doesn't matter which specialty you are, by the way. So whatever, even if you're an endodontist, even if you're a prosto, if you go into the DSCK exam is the same. Okay, that's what I know. So the DSCK exam is one exam. So even if you go, oh, I, I'm an endodontist, it's not like you're going to get more endo questions in the DSCK. If you're a prosto, you're not going to get more prosto questions. The, the DSCK exam is is one exam to evaluate your core knowledge. And then obviously when you get into the university, that's when you have to get into your specialty, right? You want to be trained your specialty. But the DSCK exam, uh, they just want to know which specialty you are. But it's not specific to, uh, you know, it doesn't change. It's not custom, the exam itself is not customized based on your specialty. Here's the confirmation degree for dentist. Uh, sorry, for the specialty. Okay. And you can see here you want to fill the first half and they'll fill up the second half. Okay. Um, here's the protocol and application requirements. You'll find that we got you from the slides. You can see this in um, required documents when you click on it. Okay. This is the exam registration again, the 3500 part. Okay. This is the protocol. We went through this. All right. And if you want to see more sample, you can go to how to prepare, right? getting your certification license. And this is the NDSE. You could look at this at the end. It's not. So this examination, let's look at that. I didn't see this actually, but I never got to that. Whoa, examination fee 7,000. Okay. But I think when you're at this level, you're fine now, right? When you're at the NDSE level. Okay. All right. But anyway, let's stick with this part here. How to prepare. You can see that uh, you have the DSEKE protocol and that's what shows you the sample questions. Okay, if you want to look for them in here. All right, so I think we covered enough uh, up to the DSCKE part in this video. Uh, we'll make a separate video for the steps afterwards, okay? If you feel like I missed anything, please leave in the comments. Help each other out with this, please. Like, if you feel like there's information that I missed that you might know, add them in the comments below the video so that others could see it and, and it'll be a complete area where we could just learn about the process for this. Okay. And uh, if you want a consult to understand what strategy is best for you, book your free consult and we'll talk about it. And um, you could find our contact info in the, uh, in the description below scholarsdental.com. And that's all everybody. I hope you found that beneficial and we'll talk about the following steps in part two in the other in the next video we'll put that in the link as well once it's uh once the video is uploaded have a good day and thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video